Hey there, this is Alexandra Loves. I cannot believe what just happened to me. I cannot even believe the serendipity that still happens even when something really, really, really challenging happens. Okay, so if you've been following the videos for the last three days, I was accosted in a club on Saturday in the same way that I was accosted just just a few months ago, I was grabbed in the arm, like by the meat of my arm in the same place after I said no several times. Um, and I've been talking about it a lot because I was just so sad about how it happened. I will get over it. Yes, it was traumatic, but I will get over it. I know how to do my work. I will, you know, I'll keep talking about it and helping other people with it. But ultimately, you will, you will not believe what just happened to me, okay? Ultimately, um, ultimately, uh... I cried a lot and I, I got really upset because I, I cried and got really upset about the, is this the state of relations right now? Is this the way it is? You will not believe what just happened. Thank you for joining me, Wise Woman and Jill Cable. Hey, how's it going? Um, so, so I made some videos about this. If you want to know like the further story, I'm going to give you a really quick recap. But if you want to know the further story, just scroll down because I made like a few videos about this because I'm just, I'm just so sick of like, like, blatant and flippant uh, like insulting accosting and assault happening and no one saying anything about it and no one doing anything about it and i went out to try to conquer a trauma and the same shit happened to me in a club on saturday basically i said no several times to a man he grabbed me by the arm and started pulling me over him it was really scary and really sickening because this guy's way bigger than me because obviously because I said no more than once and also because there was two or three guys standing right here that were right here. I mean, they were like up to my knees who were innocent fucking bystanders. Well, I wouldn't say innocent, but just bystanders. They just watched. They just watched it happen. Did fucking nothing. On the other side of this guy who was accosting me was another man. Okay? Now... This guy saw, was there long enough. To, I don't. I wasn't looking in his face, so I cannot say that um, that this guy on the other side of the guy accosting me. I cannot say that he was watching the whole thing. I know that these guys were, but I can't say that he was. All I know is that I was in this grip across somebody's body for longer than I really ever should. One second is longer, but I shouldn't have been in that. I was in it for a long time. And I got myself out eventually. He did nothing, okay? So then this guy, the guy who did it finally leaves. I'm shaking. The guy who's sitting next to him comes over and is like, that was my cousin. He shouldn't have done that. That's not okay, blah, blah, blah. And then he starts talking to me. And then he's like asking me to dance stuff. And I said no. And eventually, eventually he like went to connect. And then eventually he went away. Now, at the time, I didn't think anything of it. I was so happy. But then I started talking about this. And many women were like, do you know that there's like a racket that it's, do you know there's actually a, a racket that guys will do this? Insult, accost, assault with their friends so that the guy who comes in to save you, there's like a racket. There's something called all shucks, man. All, all sorry, miss. Look it up. All shucks, man. All sorry, miss. Basically, somebody goes out, somebody insults or assaults or accosts a woman, and then somebody comes to the rescue, so they're the good guys, so we feel safe, so we go out with them, so we say yes to them. So all these people are telling me this, and I'm like, fuck, is that what that guy was doing? Is that Because they had a long conversation before this guy started asking me the third and fourth time when I said no. Okay? By the way, I was in a corner. I couldn't get out. I was starting to feel unsafe. I couldn't get out, and I was trying to figure out how to get out while this was happening. Okay? So... This is what happened today, which is crazy. You will never believe this. Okay. I'm sitting in a... Okay, I live in Portland. There's a town called Beaverton. Beaverton is like like 15 minutes away. A week ago, I made a, a, a appointment with my friend. I haven't seen her for ever i was like let's go out let's go to this place they have mofongo there if you don't know what mofongo is look it up it's the only place in in the vicinity that has mofongo let's go on monday we're going okay we get in the car we go there i am telling my friend this story the story i just told you but in more details i'm telling her the story and then we're starting to eat our mofongos and then i hear somebody say hey i just met you i look up and it's the guy <laughs> not the guy who grabbed me, but the guy who was like, that was my cousin, it's not okay. It was the guy. Let me tell you something, people who are watching. Let me tell you something about coincidence. 
I don't believe in coincidence. I only believe in synchronicity, okay? I believe in synchronicity, all right? This, uh, hey, I met you at the co- Okay, I'm like looking at him and I'm like, who are you? And I, he's like, I was like, wait, are you the guy whose cousin grabbed me? And he's like, oh, yeah, we had so much to drink. I was like, I don't care. Okay, so this isn't a restaurant. There's maybe a few people. There was a lot of people. I said, I don't care. I was like, I need to know something. I mean, I called him out. I said it loud. Anybody could have heard it. My friend was sitting there like, <laughs> a really good friend of mine. I said, when that guy grabbed me and you came in for the rescue, did you do that on purpose? Was that part of the plan so that you could talk to me? And he kind of looks at me like, I don't know. He almost looked like he was going to run. He almost, and I was like, was it like, fe like you need to fess up right now. And he said, he said, no, no, he was just really drunk. And I was like, well, do you think that's an excuse? Cause that's not okay. I was like, the thing is, is that I, I'm glad that you did the right thing. The right thing was to come and say, I'm sorry for my friend and everything, but you have to understand this shit is happening all of the time. And it's to a point now where like, I don't even trust you. Even when you're coming to say, are you okay? I don't even trust you because you sat there while it was happening and did nothing while it was happening. And he was like, he says to me, well, I'm a counselor and I know how these things can be triggering. And I'm like, what? What? I was like, look, I was like, I was like, look, whatever it, I was like, it doesn't matter if you're drunk. It doesn't matter. Like you guys need to have a conversation before you leave your fucking house. If you're going out with your friends and they're accosting women in clubs, you need to have a conversation. By the way, we're still in the restaurant and there's like the two or three people are there and this waitress and everything. We're just like looking at us and he's standing there and he like, he said, he said satisfying things. He did say, like, I'm sorry, that was not okay. Like, I totally understand that's not okay. And I was like, really? Like, you guys need to talk before you go out. It's not acceptable, even a little bit. Like, this is a big, big issue. And he stood there. There was a couple times where it did look like he was about to, like, <laughs> like run out the restaurant. So then he just stands and he waits. And I say, I said, okay, now that I've said that, I just want to say again, Thank you for doing the most right thing you could in the moment, which was to see if I was okay and tell me that you know that was, wasn't right. It's just a really big issue and I feel like there's not enough people do it. There's not enough men doing something about it. I appreciate that you sat here and listened to me. How simple is that? To be listened to, to be heard. He sat there and he listened to me and heard me. Even if in his mind he was thinking, what a crazy bitch. I don't fucking care if you think I'm a crazy bitch for speaking out because I got accosted and speaking for other women. I don't care if you think I'm a crazy bitch. All right? I, even if he was thinking that, he stood there and he listened, okay? And the other thing was this too. I didn't go and call him an asshole or, or downplay men or dehumanize men. I just told him that assault and accosting is not okay. All right, so here's the really interesting thing. At the end of that, he goes, I'm really, really sorry. I really hope this doesn't happen again. I totally get it. It's not okay. I think he said like, yeah, it's, it's not okay for anyone to stand by or something like that. And then I said, and then he said, thank you for recognizing that I, um, said something about it. I was like, good. I'm just glad that you listened because I feel like some of the issues is that we're not being heard. And then there was this weird silence. And he, I was like, it's so weird that we ran into you. And then the, the energy just like evened out. It was just like, whew. that's all it was. That's all the confrontation was. And it was worth having because then we had a normal conversation. He was like, I'm just actually here to get my, he had something he was doing and he was looking for ATM. And you can find an ATM. He's like, actually, I still want to be connected with you. And he asked for my social media to connect to me. And that was it. Possibly that is an ally. So I just want to say, here's the spiritual, here's the sort of like spiritual implication that I, I just want to put out there. Over the last three days, I've been crying and I've just been like, this whole experience has been challenging me. I'm a love coach, right? So it's been challenging me because I'm just like, I know there are so many good guys out there. I don't see them organizing enough by my standards around this kind of assault and accosting that we deal with on a regular basis. And I, and I have a lot of great guys in my life. I also, you know, like they say, separate the wheat from the chaff. You got, you know, I also experience a lot of this bullshit behavior, this narcissistic behavior, this, um, the, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that think that the best way to get a woman is insult. 
okay? There's, there's whole programs that teach men to say negative things to women to make them feel insecure so they can fucking pick them up, okay? We're living in that world. These things are still fucking being taught, all right? So, coming down, coming down. I don't want to get off track. So, the thing is, is that for the last three days I've been crying about this and it's been challenging me as a love coach because I'm like, People want to be in relationships. How can I, how can I, how can I condone this if this is where I'm, I'm, I work with a lot of women who are looking for men. How can I, I don't want, it makes me not want to touch it. It makes me want to stand back and just be like, dude, maybe it's time to like not date, not have sex, not interact with men, close your doors, get at like, that's, that's what it was doing to me. And so I was crying about how this was being, you know, how this was rising up in me, you know? And so this is the thing I want to say about this. For those three days, I just kept saying, instead of going into that place of like being scared and like, you know, being scared and, and you know, wanting to quit my job and all that, I just kept saying to my spirits, okay? And you can talk to your gods, your spirits, your, you know, whatever you believe in, whatever you know to be true for yourself. I just kept saying, Show me that this is not the way all men are. Show me that there are more good men. Show me that there are men who are doing the work. Show me that, show me that there's a way to resolve this. Show me, show me something good can come out of this. Besides the fact of me doing my own self work, show me that this is not another situation where I'm holding all of it and I have to do all the work of myself and these guys just go on into their lives and do the same shit over and over again because that is part of the issue is that men are not doing their work. I will say, there are a lot of men who are doing their work. The general population, though, of men are not doing their work. Okay? I said it. Oh, I said it. I know it's going to piss a lot of people off. Okay? If I'm pissing you off, then do something. Okay? If I'm pissing you off, if this is pissing you off, then take a look at yourself or take a look around you. Take a look around you at what's going on. All right? And for those of you just joining me, I'm talking about how I talk to this guy confronted this guy who was part of me getting accosted uh, in, a, in a place a couple days ago, a few days ago. So I was saying to my spirits, like, show me that something good can come out of this. Show me that this is not just the way it is and that, and that these men are going to grow from this. Something, something where it's not just about me taking all the abuse and, and me doing all the work. And there I was sitting in a town that I never go to, in a restaurant I've never been to, and the guy, not even just somebody who was in the club that night, the guy whose cousin who spoke to me afterwards shows up because he was across the street getting, having some business done across the street and he just happened to see me and I didn't even see him and he called me out and he said, oh, I met you the other night. I also want to point out, I've been in this place where I'm trying to un, un dissolve the trauma of all of this. He's just like, yeah, that girl I saw that I liked. There's an issue with that. I know I'm glad he point, he said hi, but I'm just saying the fact that I'm having to deal with this and for him and his friend, his friend's probably doing whatever, his cousin's probably doing whatever the fuck he wants, whenever he wants with whomever he wants and no one's calling him out. You know what I'm saying? So even if you're in a trauma, even if you're experiencing something that makes you feel like this world is black and dark and it's making you question everything that you believe and everything that you want to um everything you don't want to see in the world it makes you scared to raise children in this world remember that you are not powerless you can at least ask god universe spirits to help you see to help you find resolution you still can ask don't give up and you guys got to help me out here. I see there's a lot of people watching. If you are still watching and you're getting this, give me thumbs up. If you're watching a replay, give me a thumbs up. Come to the comments. Say something in the comments. For those of you who are like, what is she talking about? Was all the Watch the whole video. Or I made four videos about this because I said I'm tired of people holding on to secrets of abuse. So I said that I was going to keep talking about this as I uncovered every layer of this trauma. Okay, I'm saying it because it needs to be said. I'm saying it especially because I want to motivate men to do something and I also want to trigger people. I'm saying it also because a lot of women don't feel like they have a voice. I'm speaking for women who don't know how to speak about this. Okay, and trying to shed some light on that. Something good can come out of this. 
something good came out of this for me. And I want to encourage you that if you have a secret of abuse to don't keep it in. You don't have to make a Facebook live about it. If you don't want to make a Facebook live about it, tell somebody you trust. Okay. Tell somebody who you know is going to have your back. Okay. And if you can't go to a natural place and tell the tree, tell the ocean, tell light a candle and tell the flame, but don't keep secrets of abuse. Okay. That's part of the problem. Okay, and we're going through, I want to say this last thing. I know I keep saying I'm going to be done. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? I want to say this last thing. We are going through a time right now where there is a lot of shade being thrown. We are going through a time right now where it's really scary to speak. We are going through a time right now where people are going to shut you down. Listen, here's a little hint. Okay, when you speak your heart, when you speak passionately about what's really in your heart, you're going to gain a lot of people. You're going to find a lot of people who are aligned with you. You're going to find a lot of people who are like, thank you for saying that. You're going to find a lot of people who say, go girl or go guy. You, you got this. Go however you identify. You got this. You also are going to have a lot of people who are going to want to see you shut the fuck up. All right? And I'm telling you right now, if you're passionate, you're speaking from your heart. All right? You can take all those haters and all those trolls as a good sign because it means you're triggering something in them. You're triggering the status quo that makes people feel comfortable. Guess what? Our status quo fucking sucks. Our status quo means that we as women have to take the brunt of, we have to absorb everything. We have to fix everything. We have to be abused and be happy to be nice. I'll tell you another thing. This is what some of my elders women said. What, what a couple of my, my, my matron women said. Okay, some people know it as the word crone. I use matron, okay? This is another thing. A couple of them, and I got this lesson earlier in the summer when I was accosted it earlier in the summer, and I got to tell you something. When I say no, I'm usually like, no, thank you. I'm usually like, no. I'm usually like, like, no, thanks. I learned from my crones. I learned from my matrons that sometimes you really got to bring out that inner bitch. I also did a post recently that said, what weapons are you carrying, ladies? Because I feel like we have to arm ourselves now, okay? Beyond self-defense, yes. If you don't have self-defense, you need to go get self-defense. But I'm also feeling a little bit like things are going to get violent and I want to be armed. Like that's, it's starting to, I started to feel that way on Saturday and Sunday, okay? And, <laughs> okay, coming back, coming back to the point. My point is, is that, these crones, these matrons told me, sometimes you got to bring out that inner bitch, okay? And that's what some of these ladies were saying in this post that I did before. They're saying, you got to bring out that coldness. And that is not something that comes natural to me. That is something that has popped out of me a couple times when I was in rage and fury because of some guy, what, because of the many times I've been fucking accosted in the last year. Why is this normal? Why is this normal? Why is it normal to get pushed around by men just because they don't like me because I'm not a complying with what they want, okay? Why? Why is it normal? So anyway, these women told me that sometimes you got to bring out the inner bitch and when you say no, you got to have like death in your eyes. You got to have like rage in your eyes. I'm usually, I'm usually nice to indifferent when I say no, but now I get it. Now I get it that my no kind of has to be like, I'll cut you, I'll cut you, no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna cut anybody, <laughs> I'm not gonna cut anybody. But really, I'm learning that, that no, seem, no period seems to read as it's a negotiation for the general population of men, okay? Even though it's not. And so I hear so much that's like saying, teaching us no period, mean no. Well, guess what? When we mean no, it doesn't work. Both times I got accosted this uh, this summer and this fall, I said no like five times. I said no, period, five times. It's not enough. So, you, so I'm learning that and I want to pass this on. I got to put that like stone cold bitch rage behind it. And I don't care what people do. I didn't go to that club to pick up a guy on Saturday. I went to dance. I didn't go to talk to any men. I would have preferred if none of them had talked to me, as a matter of fact, in that situation. All right? I would love to be able to go and, and you know, interact and flirt and all of that. But apparently, consent is a big issue, especially in the club scene. So, no, I don't go to clubs to dance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start going to clubs wearing, like, jumpsuits with, like, pillow. Like, I'm going to pad myself now because I'm afraid that I'm gonna, just by being present, I'm going to be accosted. That's what happened to me on Saturday. Okay, I keep going off on tangents because there's so much I want to say. I'm probably just going to keep 
what making videos again if you want to know the whole storyline just look down in my feed i named the videos it's called accosted one two three and four 101 202 three and 404 really good information a lot of great comments that people made thank you for being with me i was really passionate i cannot believe that the universe and spirits brought me this person to confront and i'm so grateful that he stood there and stayed in it with me that means something I don't know what I know that means something I'm not gonna name it so anyway I love you all pass the video on and um, I just want to say this one comment says they don't hear you until you're threatening that's true that's what I'm finding I have to be threatening to be in this world to walk down a street to go dancing I have to be a threat I have to be on defense there's something wrong with that that and you and people wonder why you hear women who are extreme talking about like witch hunting men and hating men okay it's because this stuff builds up I'm so lucky that I have healers and teachers I'm so lucky that I have practices so that I can like dissipate these feelings and talk about these feelings and deal with the trauma of these feelings but this stuff builds up over time and part of my fear is that if men don't start taking the weight on this if they don't start doing their work if they don't start talking to their brothers if they don't start if they don't start um educating their kids and if women don't start educating their, their I mean, th it's everybody, you know, I'm talking gender norms right now. I think that this really is an issue between men and women, but it's also an issue in other communities. I'm just talking about what I know. What I know is my interactions with, with men, you know? Um, and so I don't mean to leave anybody out, but I, I can say this definitively, men are not doing enough work. Generally, the general population, men are not doing enough work. It's building up within us women, and it's it's bees o'clock, y'all. Dude, it's bees o'clock. Like, we're getting to a point where men are being sent to jail, and men are uh, being arrested by police for very, for very, uh, for offenses that have a lower degree than ones that, like, are breaking skin and causing black eyes. I'm not saying either are right. Neither are right. But we're getting to a point right now where we, as a general population of women who are tired of the abuse, of the insults, of the accosting, are not going to be able to handle it much longer the way we've been so gracefully handling it for so long. It's bees o'clock, y'all. So, okay, I could go on and on and on and on. Please go look at the other videos. Please comment. Share this if you feel like somebody needs to see it. I know a lot of people who need to see this video. I love you all. I feel like that was a gift today to be able to confront this man. Um, and another gift that he was able to stand there and still be in a conversation with me. And a third gift that we were able to, we were able to come back to some sort of peaceful normalcy and stay connected after the incident. Isn't that a dream? I think it is. So thank you. As above, so below. I'll see you all later. Bye.